Hey guys, period five, here we go. This is our practice city, we're all set up. We have our sharp pencils and we're gonna keep building, we're gonna keep adding on. I have Nearpod open and folks have kind of circled what they wanna practice working on. So I sort of have an idea. I think we should start by doing a couple more just simple uh, buildings in the background um, to kind of like layer it and make it look realistic. And we'll like add more shading and we'll add more value. I'm gonna zoom out for a second. So let's just review, let's review on how to add a building. If I were to add a building behind this art building, make it kind of tall, I would wanna go in and make sure my line is always perpendicular with the um, horizon line and go in and I am gonna give myself a tall building. That's gonna be the corner of my building right there. Okay, zoom out. Notice how it's at a 90 degree angle, a 90, and it is perpendicular with the horizon line. Okay, 90 degree perpendicular with the horizon line. And in order to do the top of that building, you would do two converging lines. Make sure it reaches the vanishing point. Right? And Sorry, I'm having trouble hearing you. I'm not talking to you, Siri. Chill. So, and then I'm going to make sure the top of my building is lined up with the vanishing point. And you got to check because sometimes I notice kids don't hit the vanishing point. So I'm gonna check, make sure. Right, and then it's connected. And then I'll cut off the sides of the building. Now I could have it go farther and overlap and do a corner right here. I don't wanna confuse you guys with the overlapping just yet. So let's just kind of have that building sort of separate. So it's gonna be a pretty skinny building. And I'm gonna make sure it's at 90 degrees. Right, 90 degrees, so that's the side of my building. It's at 90. I'm going to erase my horizon line now. Oh, the table's shaking. And then I'm going to go ahead and... I'm going to make sure my vanishing point... Or sorry, my um, ruler is perpendicular with the horizon line. You see, I can see this tick mark. Right here, this tick mark is parallel. It should be parallel. Go with the same line. And then I'll cut off the side, but I don't want to overlap. That's a little confusing because um, we got these highlights going through from when I was teaching you guys the other day. We could go ahead, we could shade over that. So my light source is coming in from this side, from the right. So I'm just going to give um some like basic hatching where my lines are going towards the vanishing point my hatching is going to go towards the vanishing point and i'm not using a ruler for this i'm just adding some hatching maybe it's when your final it's your final city you may want to do the rule ruler but you can go ahead and change the direction of your pencil so your hatching is always going towards your vanishing point <clears throat> What I'm doing is I'm just kind of making it dark. Maybe I'll add another layer of shading this way. <clears throat> and not being afraid to go super dark with my value. But also making sure the viewer understands that this building is in the front. And the way that you make this building look like it's in the front is by really darkening it and giving it more details. I'm going to erase this and really darken the edge of this. That one line is really confusing, huh? Too bad I don't have white out. Um, and then maybe I'll just add light shading on this one. So a lighter value. And I know those don't really look like buildings right now, but we're just kind of warming up. And we're adding different layers. Maybe you want to blend that a little. If you wanted to give it windows, like maybe some of you are like, I want to make that look more like a building. 
You know, you would simply give yourself stripes, you know, that are lined up with the vanishing point. So give yourself a couple of stripes, rotate, kind of like you would be giving bricks, rotate. But notice how my ruler, the angle of my ruler is always rotating. And if you want to make those look like windows, then you can give them kind of like vertical lines. These are all perpendicular with the horizon line. So parallel, parallel. And you could add shading right there. Really clean up the edge. Maybe you want to add a highlight, a highlight. It's really hard to do details when it's kind of like small and, you know, far away. But really darken the corner of this. Maybe you want to add like a highlight at the top because this is where the light's hitting. Also adding like shading behind the building helps. Like we could start to figure out like, okay, well, what is my sky going to look like? What value will my sky be at? And you could kind of blend that and go in and put in more details. You could add more windows. Okay, I'm not gonna obsess over that one building too much, but that's kind of like where we're going. I can darken the value of all of the right sides, right? Which might help everything seem more 3D. Like we could have the sky at a mid value, right? And have the, always have the left side of the building darker and that might help things start to pop out. I'm actually trying to get rid of this blue. Um, if you wanna give more details to this art building, what we did in some of the classes is we added the vertical line, like so. And then what we did was we added um, lines that were going towards the vanishing point. So this line right here, is going towards that vanishing point. You can line it up. And this line right here is going to the vanishing point. And then add vertical, 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 vertical hatching. So going back in and adding details really helps. Okay. So I feel like we're off to a good start. I'm gonna look at the chat does anyone have questions? Anyone talking to me? Uh, you just posted a new city to Seesaw. Um, can I look in one second, Joss? Or can I look, like, do you think there's something wrong with it? If you wanna fix up your um, sidewalk, just because your sidewalk is really close to you, you can really darken the lines of your sidewalk, the edges of your sidewalk. Like so. Thanks, Mike. So, um, I'll, I'll look, Jocelyn. It's hard for me to do it when I'm, when I'm doing this. Um, as far as a sidewalk... The key to the sidewalk is really having these lines dark and you have two, one, two, one, two. And then the corners of the sidewalk, like the little cracks on the side of the sidewalk, they are all vertical lines, meaning they're straight up and down. So vertical, 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 vertical. And all of these lines, just to review, if you're doing the sidewalk, all of these lines, I talk about it in the video, but all of the lines on the left side go to the right vanishing point. You see? All of the lines on the left sidewalk go to the right vanishing point. So it goes to the opposite. But when you're turning the edge of the sidewalk, then you go to vertical hatching. Okay, now if you were to have more happening like in the streets, right, and you wanted an opposite side, 
you would go ahead, you would extend that street like so. Right, and then the street's kind of coming out. So I'm looking at some of these that you identified, the things that you circled in the city that you requested. And some of you guys circled the stuff on the opposite side of the street. So like you could turn that into a street and then um, like for the middle of the street, you could put some of those little things that they have in the middle of the street, like little gardens. Right, I've never drawn these before, like these little garden things. But this could be your street, like you have a line coming out, a line going in, right? This is our sidewalk and we can lightly shade the sidewalk, or sorry, the street. Brightly shade the street and to make that look neater, and add it, we can add a lot, like a heavy shadow where the sidewalk ends. Like really go in with a dark value pencil if you have it and really shade that and kind of like add more hatching. If I wanted to do one of those gardens that's kind of like in the middle of the street, I would use the opposite vanishing point. So let me know if I should slow down. So opposite vanishing point, you see? Anything like the sidewalk or like little details on the street, I would use the opposite vanishing point to get kind of the angle of the box. The same if we were like building a car, we were drawing a car in the street. We would use the opposite vanishing point. So this is kind of like a box that's flat on the street. I could turn this into a garden you know, by like figuring out, okay, if I want to have trees, right, the trees are going to be big and they're going to get small. So you could do a circle for a tree. Oh my goodness. A circle for a tree. A circle for a tree. Let's say you want to add three trees and they would slowly get bigger because we're using something called space where things get bigger and bigger as they get closer, closer to us. As something gets closer to you, it gets bigger. So you could go ahead, you could turn this into a little tree. All right, and we wouldn't see the bottom of the tree. All right, but it's all about giving yourself detail. And then we could turn this little thing into a garden by giving it hatching. And then if I wanted to give the garden a bit of an edge, I would make it a vertical, like just like I did with the sidewalk, I would add a vertical line that's parallel. And then I would use the opposite vanishing point all right, so I'm lined up with the opposite vanishing point to do the bottom of the garden. And it's kind of like a garden that's rising up. And then I could add a lot of hatching to kind of make that stick up. So I'm looking at these pictures that you guys circle. Let's see. All right, so this is at a really dark value. Right, and maybe you want to give yourself a couple of lines here, add extra details. Maybe you want to bring the value down. Maybe you want to bring the value of the street down more. And maybe we want the street to go dark to light. Maybe you want to add blending in the street. But what you want to do is you really want to darken the edge so the viewer understands like, oh, that's a new thing. And really go in with your darker pencils, if you have those B pencils, and really shade those dark to light. Because those are mini. Oh, you can't see. Dang, you couldn't see what I was doing. 
You guys gotta come off the mic if you can't see, but really go in and really darken the edge of this. Add some shadows, and then things start to pop out. If you were to do a building on the opposite side of the street, right? So we're kind of like running out of space. That's where the big paper comes in handy. This could be the base of the building. And then the building would still be going up and down with a vertical line. So a line that is perpendicular to the horizon. So it'd be very tilted, right? So you have a building on the opposite side and then you would follow this vanishing point right here to do the top of the building. So I made it too tall. So what I would do is I would erase all that, right? So the top, like anything on the opposite end of the street follows that vanishing point. And the bottom follows the vanishing point, the bottom of the building. And then the lines are vertical. So kind of like same rule, you could give yourself windows Now this building seems very close to us. But you could give yourself windows like so. And all of these lines are going towards the vanishing point. And if you wanted to intersect the windows, you would do vertical lines that are parallel, straight up and down. And you could go in and you could add shading. Shouldn't I can't talk shading. Okay, so I'm looking in my chat and I'm seeing if anyone has a request. But right now we're working on doing something on the opposite end of the street. But I'm leaving a highlight right here for the window. So that's where the light is hitting. Something just fell. If I wanted to do a door, right? Like a really tall door on this side of the street, the tops, for the tops of the door, you use the vanishing point. And then you do a vertical line, a line that's straight up and down with the horizon line. So again, all the vertical lines need to be parallel. How are we doing out there? I feel like my door is a little crooked. You could shade that at a darker value. How are you guys doing? Five, I'm doing awesome. Three in the middle, one más o menos. Three. Three. So what we're doing is we're doing kind of like a building on the other side. Anything at the side of the building goes towards a vanishing point. So if you wanted to add bricks, you would slowly rotate it, your ruler. So all of the lines are going to the vanishing point. You could turn this into kind of like bricks if you wanted, but all these lines are vertical. Three, so I only have two threes. I don't know how everyone else is. I'm just trying to see what else you guys. Five, Marilyn says five, okay. I'm looking at what else. Someone um, identified the clock. Like how do you do a clock? Mm-hmm. I'm looking at what you guys circled. So if we were to do a building with a clock on the opposite side of this street, and once again, like any, like shading, really darkening the edges of things and shading really helps us to understand when something begins and something ends. If you're wondering how we did this one in the middle, all these two lines go to the, the vanishing point. These lines right here 
go to the go to the right vanishing point. So we're kind of doing details in the middle of the street. If I were to do a building with a clock next to the art building, all right, let me get that corner in. I go go in. Actually, let's add a clock to this one building over here. Because I have an idea of what we can do in that corner. So if I were to add a clock, so I'll keep that so you can still see that side of the street. But if I were to add a clock in this building or any kind of sign, you want to give yourself a workspace in the, in the building, like on the side of the building. Be like, okay, I am going to put a clock here. Right, rotate it down. And I'm giving myself like a bottom and a top line. Like, okay, I'm gonna, my clock's gonna be in here. Right, so, or like same if you're like doing signs or a bunch of windows, you're gonna like make a little note. Like this is where my clock's gonna be. This line, the top and the bottom line, if I'm on the right side of the building, I'm gonna use the right vanishing point. And like we did with the letters, you make little notes. Like this is gonna be the top of my clock. Like you're gonna make little dots. Like this is the top of my clock, this is the bottom. This is where the side of the clock's gonna hit, right? So I'm making like little dots so I know where I'm going with my pencil and I'm planning things out. And then like I was carving like letters out on the art, you're kinda, you put in an ellipses and you start to carve it out. And I can give myself two circles in between. So one circle and then another circle. I'm looking at the clock that's in this. I feel like the, the building with the clock, it would be better if um, the values were darker. One thing that can help this building is really going in with your dark value pencil if you have it. See, this is a HB. Some of you guys got these nice pencils. If you really want these nice pencils, or you want me to try to get some for you, just send me an email. But some of you guys got these nicer pencils, right? So this is a dark value pencil. And if I go in, you really want to kind of like darken the corners of these buildings. You know, because that makes things kind of feel closer. Like really darkening the edges. And then all of a sudden it pops out and I'm gonna add some more hatching so I understand the corner. Cause some of those build some of those drawings look really cool, and it's because they have contrast. It's because they have a full range of value and they're not afraid to go dark. So all of a sudden it starts to pop more. I can also darken the alley down there. Now I kind of am losing that that's the alley. So maybe I'm gonna bring that up. I changed my mind, bring up that value. But anyways, um, all my pencils are acting weird. So here's a dot for the middle of my clock. I can give myself little tick marks. And then you can go ahead and you can put in a clock. Um, yeah, I could give myself another box to work on right here. And you can carve out anything really, like uh, a letter five goes that way, right? Yeah. So I'm gonna give myself a little dot here, a little dot here. And for the five, the line of the five, I'm gonna use that vanishing point, but I'm gonna keep the vertical part vertical, and I'm gonna carve out the letter five, the number five, I mean. Right, for period five, woo, period five. I could go in and give myself a shadow, but I'm not gonna go that detailed. But you could go ahead, you could give yourself numbers, you could put in symbols. The key is using the vanishing point. Like if I'm working on the right side of the building, I'm gonna use the right vanishing point to give myself a little workspace as I do work. Maybe I wanna add some shading. 
Okay, I'm looking at the chat. We have 10 minutes left of class. I'm looking at the chat for requests. If I wanted to make this like a uh, tower with a peak, if I wanted to give this like clock tower kind of like a thing, like a, like a pointy top, I could go in and I could use my ruler to go ahead and give myself a converging line right at the top. Oops, didn't go all the way. Really got to flatten the book. Any requests in the chat? Wow, that's a tall tower. I think that's too tall. I'm gonna go ahead and give myself a converging line kinda at that angle. Mm, I'm gonna make it a little taller. What I'm trying to do is I'm trying to figure out how, how tall. I'm thinking I'm gonna add a peak to this. Right, so I'm giving myself a line that's going towards the converging line. And then I'm gonna go ahead and I will cut that in half, right? And this is a little dot. I'm giving myself a dot. Do a Spider-Man swinging from a building. Are you drawing with this, Andrew? You promised to post a seesaw? I'm gonna give myself a dot at the very top. So I got this line, this line right here from that vanishing point. So I'm gonna give myself a dot. Andrew, I'll do Spider-Man if you promise you're going to post a seesaw in a second. And maybe I could give myself another dot. Maybe I'll turn this into an A. But I can give myself a little top to there. I know I still have my highlight. I'll erase the lines I don't need anymore. All right, and I give myself a little peek to my period five clock building. Always watching the clock, we don't have enough time together. How do I do this side? You guys wanna write in the chat, how would I do the other side of the peak? How in the world would I do that? I would use the opposite vanishing point to go ahead and figure out the angle of that top peak. So you see, this line goes down to this vanishing point. Right, it's going that way. So again, if I'm working on the left side of the building, I'm gonna use my left vanishing point. Here's the tricky part. This line right here needs a parallel line. So I know it looks so weird, but these two lines need to be parallel. And then you can go in and you can add all sorts of hatching. All of these lines go towards my vanishing point, my left vanishing point. And then I have this cool like top. So you can use this to add houses. You could put little bricks on top of there. Actually, well, yeah, no, they would be sideways. They would all, all these little side bricks would go this way. So again, how did I do that? I'll show you again on this building right here, this extra building we did, okay? So repeat. So if I'm using the right, the right building, if I'm working on the right side of the building, I'm gonna use the right vanishing point for all of my windows, all of my doors. Joss, I will look at your city in a second, okay? Um, nope, that's too tall. It's gonna be easier when you're working on the big paper too. Okay, so that's gonna be my peak. That's a tall peak. But I will figure out the midpoint, right? So I'll cut this in half, go up to the top, and that's my little triangle. So you kind of give it a little triangle. But this angle, where does this angle come from? It's not really there. We're gonna, we would normally erase it. But that angle comes from vanishing point two. And then how do I cut off the top? Well, I use the other vanishing point. So zoom out, use the other vanishing point. 
And it's really, we're getting really pointy here. And you probably should go lighter. I shouldn't have gone so dark. Do Spider-Man swinging. That's the only request I have. To cut off the side, right? Normally I would do like parallel vertical lines, normally. But because the shape is slanted, I would make these lines parallel. So it kind of goes to the side like that. But that's kind of like a cool little detail that we can add. Right, makes things look cool. Again, you can add more windows. Again, all the windows on the right side would go to the right vanishing point. Okay, other requests in the chat. Quick review, how do you make one of these little things in the middle of your sidewalk? Right, if you were to do something in the middle of the sidewalk, fill in. let's fill in all this space right here. Can you make a burning building that's smoking? Yeah. So if I were to make this building burning, right? Go ahead and add fire. Could like give this little holes right here. And then give myself little flames that are coming out and then really go in and really each cloud should be its own form so I should really take the time to go in each cloud add some blending add some curving ellipses to make that cloud come out And the key is to really draw those flames and then shade behind. All right, and you can do a lot of like curved hatching to kind of show the movement of the smoke. So we're getting into like a cool principle of design called movement. And really go in. And because our value is so dark here, it would look cool if you just left the flames white. And then you fling, you um, go around and then go dark to light, dark to light. And really draw the curved lines of the smoke, dark to light, dark to light. Make sure you leave the highlight for where the smoke is. And what you wanna do is you wanna draw a sky that's smoky. You know, with the clouds. And if you guys wanted to do that Statue of Liberty thing or someone crying, you know, in the sky, you know, to kind of like symbolize, you could put your tear. Because I know you guys all circled that Statue of Liberty. I don't know if we have time to go over that now. Class is too short, but you could go ahead. You can draw a tear coming down. Ah. That wasn't on film, damn. But you could go ahead, you could draw a little tear coming down, all sorts of smoke. So I don't know if that reads from far away that that's fire. Maybe I need to add more flames on this side. You know, and then really shade around there. One of the keys is to always make sure the boundaries are clear. Like, where does one building begin? Where does another begin? I'll go ahead and I'll pull up a value so we could tell that that's a building. And then we can make the whole sky smoky. Really go in with details. Okay, as far as Spider-Man, I don't know if Andrew's going to post anything. But I could go ahead, I could give myself a space for Spider-Man and kind of put Spider-Man like, maybe there he is. 
popping out. Pencils are acting really weird today. Here's Spider-Man. Because he's at a darker value, so maybe he's swinging, I don't know. Woo! Trying to save people. So there's Spider-Man. I feel like we got off track and it's 12.50. I can't believe it. But you know what? Like you can watch this in replay and add more details. I feel like that was not enough time. During academic prep, try to draw something on the other side of the street. You know, you can extend your street and you can have another one of those medians. Like so, where you have kind of a space in the middle of the street. I want you guys to post this to Seesaw right now. I got distracted by Spider-Man. But go ahead, post to Seesaw. Try to do buildings on the other side of the street. Okay, I hope that was helpful. Bye, have a nice day, enjoy your day. Jocelyn, I'll look at your Seesaw, have a great day. Guys, please post to Seesaw. Post what you have or post your cubes. Okay, I hope that helped.